American adults consume 44 ounces of water a day. And it's a vital part of every business, school, and public operation, but it's under threat. There are contaminants present in just about everyone's water to some degree. Well, the ones we worry about most are arsenic, lead, and PFAS. They each have a different source and different problems. At the moment, there's still PFAS in a lot of people's water. There are issues with what's in the water and how it's transported. In the United States, a water main breaks every two minutes in this country, every two minutes. So these are old systems and um, we need to invest in them. Meanwhile, filtering drinking water is almost seen as a necessity in metro and urban areas. The water filtration market for homes was worth $10.85 billion in 2021 and is expected to grow 10.5% from 2022 to 2030 globally. The number one reason a consumer may start thinking about filtration is really the, the taste of their tap water. And we at Brita really don't want you to have to make environmental trade-offs or turn to another beverage knowing how healthy water is for you. By the beginning of 2024, the EPA is planning to finalize a rule requiring facilities to report on PFAS concentrations in tap water. It's going to cost about $47 billion in infrastructure investments across the U.S. to treat for PFAS at four parts per trillion. And we think that the ongoing cost is going to be about $700 million a year. What is legal is not necessarily what's safe. So how safe is tap water in the U.S.? And do Americans need to be filtering everything that comes from the sink? The U.S. ranks only 23rd in the world for safe drinking water, which is near the bottom of comparable nations. U.S. News & World Report says Hawaii, Alabama, Tennessee, South Carolina, and Massachusetts have the best drinking water quality in the country. But J.D. Power rates the best U.S. states for tap water as Kentucky, Washington, New York, Oregon, and Kansas. They say the worst states are Alabama, Maryland, New Mexico, Texas, and Pennsylvania. Rating a tap water to say where is the safest, where is the worst, it's a really complicated answer. When you have this mixture of contaminants that all have different endpoints and are toxic at different concentrations, it's really hard. The truth is... There's not a geographical boundaries for where the problems are. About 300 million Americans get their drinking water through a public water system. It works by collecting water from a lake, river, reservoir, or aquifer and transporting it, sometimes thousands of miles away, to a water treatment facility. There, it is filtered and disinfected before it is distributed to communities. That distribution usually happens first through a water main and then through a water line from the main to a home or business. Water mains and U.S. infrastructure is pretty dated. Congress has been not investing in infrastructure. They always do a small investment of four to five billion dollars a year. We need at least a trillion dollars over the next 25 years to make the investments in the water systems across the U.S. And so that's just really not nearly enough. The other thing about water systems in this country is they're very fragmented. We have over 50,000 water systems. Many of them serve less than 10,000 people. Now, when you have a lot of small water systems like that, we have challenges around whether those water systems are serving enough people to be able to raise revenue to reinvest. In large cities where they have a lot of people, they can tap into and raise rates. But if you get to cities like Flint or struggling systems like Jackson, where they have never have the infrastructure, the payments to pay for it, where the people with the resources have moved out, we're often left with people who can no longer afford those. I think that there are multiple threats to drinking water across the U.S. The resiliency piece, we're seeing weather variability, climate variability all across the U.S. We will see in one given location a drought, and then three months later, we'll have severe flooding. As we have droughts, we choose from different water and it may be more contaminated. As we have floods that wash out the systems, but then we also have toxins like arsenic, PFAS, lead, and others. And so we have these distinct problems, but we need at least $630 billion to keep our systems up. And that really doesn't count the investments needed for lead in PFAS, which Congress has made a helpful down payment on, but we have a lot farther to go. 
Treated water is pretty good in the U.S. It's regulated by the Environmental Protection Agency under authority from the Clean Water Act and the Safe Drinking Water Act. 93% of Americans receive their drinking water from a community water system that is completely in compliance with all health-based standards all the time. We always want to make tap water safe for but it is safe. Just because it's treated doesn't mean that there are no contaminants present. Those legal limits really lag behind what is known as far as the health impacts of some of these contaminants. We actually have health-based standards for about 90 different contaminants that are known to occur in drinking water. In a typical water treatment procedure, contaminants like dirt are first filtered out through a settlement or sedimentation process. And then the clean water would go onto a filter we would apply different chemicals for the treatment process to improve that process, make it more efficient. Chlorine is the most common disinfectant. We add chlorine because we want that to linger in the process to keep bacteria from growing. It may set in a tank for a while or it may run through the distribution system pipes for a long way before it gets to a customer's home, maybe miles before it gets there. Some of those byproducts can interact with the water distribution system, resulting in contaminants in the water. The process of disinfection is absolutely necessary to protect people from pathogens, but there are offsets to that. There are byproducts formed from disinfection. Pipes, as well as faucets and fixtures, are some of the most common ways lead gets into water. Lead, the primary source, are lead pipes. So instead of it coming from the source water, it's actually from the distribution system. It is from the pipes that connect to the houses and the buildings. And the problem is they leach lead into our drinking water. Lead is known to cause physical and mental developmental delays and decreased attention span that impairs learning. In adults, it is linked to kidney problems and high blood pressure. And there's really no safe level of exposure has ever been identified. So we need to get it out. Lead was banned a couple of decades ago. Typically, we see higher concentrations of lead pipes in, in older cities, so uh, in the Northeast, Midwest. Chicago is the city with the most amount of lead pipes in the country, and New York City comes in third. There's a program to try to reduce and eliminate all of those lead service lines within 10 years, by 2032. The Biden administration has set that goal. Congress invested $15 billion and dedicated to it. But the cost estimates now are it's going to be around $60 billion. So it'll come out of rates or we need more money from Congress. Consumers should be familiar with what's in their tap water if they're concerned. They can look up the tap water quality uh, consumer study reports, the municipality provides that data available, and then there are also test kits that are available. Toxins may end up in the water supply due to industrial activities. The contaminants that are most common in tap water are really going to vary by region. So in some places it might be something like nitrate, which is really big in more rural communities but is present in large urban areas as well from fertilizer runoff and other kinds of sources. When we look at arsenic, we find, uh, which is a toxic chemical that causes neurological problems, it tends to be where there's a lot of shale and oil and gas because it's naturally coming from there. At least 45% of tap water in the U.S. is known to have PFAS in it. This map shows a sampling of where PFAS was found in drinking water in the U.S., but it is not exclusive. These per and polyfluorinated alkyl substances, they're made by different companies that take fluorine and they attach it to, uh, to carbon molecules and they stick around forever. That's why they got the nickname of Forever Chemicals. We have been monitoring for PFAS for some time, and, and we see that it's occurring in drinking water systems at levels of concern. Not only is it a carcinogen, but that chemical is also undermines our immune system. It undermines the effectiveness of vaccines, which is a big issue. Keeping up with new toxins is time consuming as companies are continually developing new chemicals. As the days go on, more chemicals get added to that PFAS designation. Adding PFAS to the list of contaminants regulated by the EPA is taking years. We are now in the process of establishing a drinking water standard for about six different PFAS. And we plan to have a final PFAS rule uh, by the end of the year or early next year. After the rule is in place, water treatment facilities need time to comply. 
most tap water is probably not going to have a system set up at the treatment plant where PFAS is going to be able to be treated out. First, if you can't eliminate that contamination from the source or find a source that doesn't have it, that's ultimately the, the best way to do it. But when it's there, the best way to treat for that is through granular activated carbon or through certain resins that may um, have the compound actually adhere to it and, and remove it from the water. It's an effective treatment. It's not a really complicated treatment, but it can be very costly. But at the moment, there's still PFAS in a lot of people's water. The majority of exposure to these contaminants happens from drinking the water, not from showering or brushing your teeth. And with chemical contaminants, a lot of the times you can't boil off the contaminants the way that you could boil water to disinfect it. The water filtration market is expected to grow about 50% from 2023 to 2030. The major companies in the space are A.O. Smith Corporation, Brita LP, which is owned by Clorox, Pentair PLC, and Helen of Troy Limited, which makes the pure water filters. There are a lot of different types of water filters, but the most common are carbon filtration or gravity, reverse osmosis, ion filtration, UV light, or others. There absolutely does need to be some sort of additional treatment, probably in most areas across the United States, depending on the contaminant, but that's going to be site-specific. We at Brita really don't want you to have to trade off between great quality water and sort of environmental impact. We want to keep you from turning to bottled water usage in your home. And so filtration is a great option for that. If we're relying on filters, people without the money aren't going to be able to do that. But if it helps you feel more confident about your water, go for it. If you use a filter longer than the manufacturer suggests, there's a good chance that you're actually degrading the quality of your water to a significant amount. But we really believe that the people who, who, who are responsible for the contamination should have to pay for this, not our customers. More treatment is necessary. If that's some sort of extra step of filtration at the plant, um, or even you know protections upstream from the plant, keeping a lot of these chemicals out of the environment to begin with is very possible in a lot of situations. Read your water bill, find out the quality of your water. Um, that is the best thing um, that uh, people can do to protect themselves and their families.